mixer and uh, we're doing a little short film uh, on a workshop about art and activism or artivism and this is uh, to support the Bob Brown Foundation uh, event uh, workshops and talks it's primarily in support of the Takain or Takainia forest in northwest Tasmania which is uh, under threat from logging and mining four-wheel driving I was born in Singapore mixed uh, Asian heritage and uh, or ethnicity and I've uh, been in Australia 25 years now I worked for 40 years at sea it, now my job is uh, doing as much as I can to uh, preserve the environment uh, to make sure that climate action is uh, taken because that's a real threat. I have my boat ready in case the sea level rises. I've got uh, all the gear in the boat ready to go. But these are just gestures. These are just symbols. Much like artivism. They provide us with the visuals, with the audio, with the written word to direct our attention and our energies towards this uh, impending a human catastrophe actually not just impending it's actually happening right now climate change is real and it's happening and my medium is using a thin gauge aluminium sheet much like copper tooling this is aluminium tuning I call it uh, met art metal art and uh, I've only been doing it for about four years uh, I grew up in a in a household uh, where my father is a self-taught artist and musician, brilliant. Uh, started working on a linen like this. It's probably been done before, but he, he created a style that was different, unique. And uh, I've always wanted to pursue it. And it took me 40 years <laughs> to get around to actually doing it. And you can see some of my pieces here. That's what I'm going to show in the workshop, uh, the basics of how to use this medium, sheet aluminium, to produce art that will help in our activist work, or anything for that matter. Alright, I think it's that time we should go to the workshop and see how we're going to do the basics for uh, creating this kind of artwork. So just follow me. Oops. Oops. So here's my little humble workshop. There's my poor little MG, which I'm trying to fix. And here's my work bench. Now I've got a bit of gear here, so uh, I'll explain what we have here. And uh, this is where I do most of the work to create the, the artwork. And uh, here's my workbench. And uh, I've got a selection of tools and materials, so I'm going to start on this side. This is uh, your thin gauge aluminium sheet. In this case, it's a 0.6 millimeter thick sheet. You can buy this uh, generally in um, 8 by 4 foot uh, sheets from uh, any metal supplier. You can go thicker depending on what application, but I find a 0.6 is good for these small artworks. So I've got a little uh, off cut here which we'll be using to create something uh, later. I use uh, MDF for medium density, density fiberboard as a backing for my pieces. So uh, that's a possibility too depending on uh, what you're creating. There's also uh, frames that you can use. You can put your metal sheet on frames. So all kinds of possibilities. The uh, basic tools that I use are a range of hammers so this bought these cheap hammers and I've ground um, points on them different shapes on them so I can uh, create different uh, kind of relief or shapes on the thin sheet of aluminium I've got mallets too so almost anything can be used to create uh, the features you want on your piece I've got even little molds like this old bearing uh, some iron pieces of iron Things like this can be put underneath and hammered on top. So in this case, it looks like a flower. So uh, that's a possibility. I also use uh, wire, different thicknesses, which I can bend into shapes. Long ones, short ones, and hammer either on the face of the sheet or put them underneath and use it as a mold. Uh, we can use things like uh, wire brushes. 
brush the metal with your power tool. We can use little grinding uh, heads, wheels. Got some uh, simple electric tools here. Multi tool with a sander on it. Uh, behind me here is a um, thing like a uh, rotary uh, engraving tool with different heads. You can use that to engrave stuff. Yeah. You need safety gear when you're operating uh, tools. In fact, anytime you're hammering because you just never know. Glasses, that's for painting. And uh, I also have earplugs in my pocket. We have coatings. I am using uh, automotive uh, coatings. You can buy any uh, paint shop, good paint shop. Also enamel uh, sprays. And um, I've also got clear acrylic to uh, seal the artwork after it's tape coated. Or you can leave it brushed aluminium, depending again on the uh, type of artwork you want to create. Brushes, cloths, yeah. So um, that's about the basics of it. And uh, we can just start producing something. So in this case, I'm going to just uh, create an image here of a um, cockatoo in flight. So uh, I'm just drawing here as a tail, wings, little head, beak, body, okay, tail feathers. Okay, we're just getting the basic outlines. Feathers, 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 feathers. So, we don't have to be super detailed, just a general uh, idea. There you go. Now, I'm going to start hammering <coughs> the outline. So, I can take a piece of wire, bend it to the shape of this uh, wing leading edge of the wing like so doesn't have to be exact now notice I've got underneath here a uh, bit of old carpet you can use carpet rubber anything that's malleable and soft so that the aluminium can actually uh, bend under pressure the so let's have a look on this side it's made an indentation I don't know if the camera can pick it up but that wire being hammered into it. It's now given an outline. And you can do this um, wherever you want. So that's one technique. Another would be to use, uh, say, a hammer with a little uh, point ground onto it to maybe create. I want to bring out or rather reverse the way that the thing has curved so I'm going to turn it over and I can see where I've knocked and I can use my hammer with a rounded edge or I can use a large ball pin hammer or anything uh, fine, but the basic idea is to make it now curve that way so the body is standing in relief so yeah that's a basic technique you can use let's see what we got here we got here it's going to be a bit noisy now we can use multi-tool that is pretty noisy so i'm going to put my earplugs on because i like to have my hearing preserved and my eyes protected so i'm using this 80 uh, grit sanding pad create that light create that light feathering or feather texture like so 
Similarly, we can use uh, this tool. And grind in or engrave. I won't operate it, but engraving features to make that wing stand up. I think we'll have a example of uh, cockatoos in flight in one of my pieces in one of the stills and you can see the end result but really um, just experiment with it just uh, pick up a piece of metal get some tools and just go for it there's no right or wrong way to do it just get into there and do it so right now we've got uh, a little bit of feature I just want to show you how we coat it you can use spray painting techniques, you can use hand brush. After prepping the surface, I just don't worry about primer or anything. And I just put in paint, yeah? So in this case, it's just my dirty old tinner, just to get things going. And then I might add a little bit of spray, uh, spray paint on it, okay? So I won't do it because I put my mask on and you won't hear me. And uh, I could use um, different colors and work that image up. So now not only is the aluminum uh, relief standing out, but the coating, the coloration also comes out. So yeah, that's the basic of it. Uh, don't look like much now. Take me a few hours to get it right. Uh, look towards my stills and uh, other examples of the work that I've produced before to see the end result. pieces I call this uh, blue sea and really it's a stylized depic depiction of waves and the technique uh, used to produce this is much the same as uh, what we showed earlier on in the uh, workshop uh, we use wire to uh, define the wave uh, each wave element and then uh, we hammered it from back out to get that um, 3d effect and then we coated it with uh, various blues and silvers and uh, yeah, I like it. I like the uh, way it's just uh, repetitive, kind of a soothing effect. But it also sends a message that the ocean, the ocean can be both benign and also uh, a killer. And I spent all my life at sea, so I really respect it. Particularly now that the sea levels are rising due to uh, climate change. We really need to start uh, doing something about it. So that's that. Okay, so uh, with this one, I call it Fields of Gold. Um, in the foreground here, we have a whole bunch of crops growing, probably somewhere in the wheat belt there. And a lot of the flowery things. Uh, that'll pick up in the light. If it's a light we're falling on it, it'll come right out. Using a lot of engraving uh, with power tools and scratching my hand. In the distance, we have the hills, the mountains, and other. Uh, crops growing there and uh, a sky that's basically orange with the setting sun or the rising sun so yeah I like these kind of pieces because they they give a nice uh, sense of stillness but again in keeping with the theme of altivism this could also depict a climate that is breaking down here I have a, uh, a piece which I was playing with and you, you look at the detail, it's a nightscape and that's supposed to depict a full moon and uh, the detail here are of wildflowers so it's like you were lying in a field of wildflowers looking up at the moon, the night sky so um, we hope uh, the wildflowers will still be here with uh, climate breakdown, changing uh, conditions whether the plants will survive here we have a work in progress, uh, quite a large piece and uh, what it is, is a replacement for a um, plywood sign that is very iconic here where I live in Hamilton Hill. Uh, that sign is now deteriorated, it's been there for oh, at least a de decade and people used to repaint it every summer or so. 
that side fallen down. So I decided to take this aluminium and make up something and put it back up out there in the uh, bit of vacant land. So it's, I've been using a uh, engraving tool to just bring out the wording. Then I'll hammer it out for more 3D effect. Maybe put in a nice background of daisies and th things and all and uh, coat it up. Put a backboard on it and then uh, put it up uh, on the vacant land. See how it goes. Over here I've got a, an old surfboard, a shortboard. It's actually been clad in uh, my artwork. It's actually a uh, cladding of thin gauge aluminium and uh, I've got a little scene there of the beach at uh, South Fremantle just to show that what you can do uh, with this uh, metal art. You can clad anything or you can have uh, freestanding artworks, sculptures and uh, this one uh, was an experiment and uh, I'm learning how to uh, use it in different ways. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is actually use this one to make a banner which I can take to the rallies. I put some uh, slogans on it. So we'll start with a little black and go Okay, and then continuing. So uh, we've turned this little bit of uh, artwork into something that's optimism something that's going to send a message, something that's a symbol of uh, what could happen if we ignore uh, what's going on now with climate change. There you go. So here is a sculpture depicting a gas fracking well. This is the piece of equipment that they put on top of the pipe that, that's drilled into the gas reserve. And these things will be popping up all over the landscape here in WA in New South Wales if we're not careful. This uh, fracking well looks like it's falling apart and this is what happens out in the field. And then they leak gas and gas goes in the atmosphere, we've got global heating, we've got climate change. So we took it to the beach down in Cottesloe which is one of the famous beaches here in WA. Uh, during the Sculptures at the Sea uh, exhibition and we moved into that area and, and set it up on the beach before we were chased out. But we had made our point and got our shots and uh, it's good to send the message that it is important to stop fossil fuel extraction, particularly gas. Following that uh, action on the beach, this uh, piece of work had made the local newspaper and it's, it's evidence of how artivism, art for active, uh, activism can work because there's nothing like a visual that sends a message.